So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. We're down here at the woodlot today. We're gonna make some firewood. We're at the log splitter right there. Where are we at? Right there's the log splitter. And I also have my burn pile going today to get rid of some scraps. But before we get the log splitter going, guys, let me show you all what we had on the sawmill over the past few days. I sawed up some poplar and some really nice cedar. So go check that out and I'll see you guys back here in just a minute.
right guys, we're getting a pretty good pile of firewood today. This is, I think most of it's poplar. There's a little bit of red oak in there. I'm gonna figure out a system here sooner than later on how to catch this. But right now I'm just letting it drop on the ground and I'll bring the tractor bucket down here and stoop it up when I'm ready to move it. So for those of you that didn't see the debut of this log splitter about a month ago, this is the Woodmiser FS500. I think Woodmiser makes about four different log splitters and this is the biggest one dual direction right there as far as the splitting goes has the loader on the front the axle is for highway use you can pull this down the road at 80 miles an hour it's got a honda engine a really nice unit i really like it it's got box wedges up here that do the splitting does a really good job so when i showed this log splitter for the first time some of you guys didn't like one thing about this splitter so let's talk about it so that complaint was a lot of you guys said there was too much trash with the splitter, meaning when it goes through the box wedge, there was a lot of little kindling pieces left over. And there is some kindling pieces left over when it goes through the box wedge. Right there's a small piece. You know, here's a few pieces right here. Some bark comes off of it. And most of it happens when the material passes through the wedge and it gets split on the top right here. And that is what makes most of what you guys would call trash. I actually call it kindling right there. I save most of this for kindling. But the bark and the really small stuff like this, I throw in the burn pit. That's why you have your burn pit right beside your log splitter. I don't think it's a big deal. It's not a deal breaker for me. But I can see your concern with a little bit of trash coming off the logs as it goes through the splitter. Me, myself, I don't think it's a big deal. I've ran your regular log splitter that you see at the big box store. And after you run it for a day, there's always chips and bark underneath it as well. So here's a good way to look at it. I've ran this splitter for about eight hours now. And that's the amount of, I guess, leftover wood debris and trash that has been left after all the splitting that I've done. And that's not all the wood I've split off this machine. A bunch of it I've already stacked. But right there on the ramp, you have those holes where a lot of the debris falls through. And I've not done one cleanup yet, and that's the amount of trash that's been left over after eight hours of use. That's not too bad. So every year I go to Ohio to the Paul Bunyan show, and a lot of you guys come there to meet me, we have a good time. And I think that's the number one firewood show in North America, but I could be wrong about that. It's pretty big as far as firewood goes. There's tons of processors. You know, there's some processors that are, you know, as big as a house. And I walked around them this year and I really took a close look at them after they had ran all day and done the demonstrations. Under every one of those machines, I saw wood chips or trash, whatever you want to call it. Pretty big piles of it. So I don't think this is a big deal at all. I think this is standard when you start getting into processing logs with a commercial machine which is what this is. So for you guys out there that have doubts or you're kind of on the fence about this machine because of that, when you get to a price point on a machine like this that's commercial, I think they all have a, a little bit of trash that gets left over. So if that's what you're worried about, I wouldn't worry about it. All right, guys, two quick things here and we'll get back to work. Number one, I'm out of logs, grab the chainsaw and cut up some of this oak. And number two, Woodmiser is not paying me to say anything about that log splitter. So anything I say is my own opinion on that. If I didn't like it, I tell you guys. I probably wouldn't be using it if I didn't like it. There's nothing here that I use on this channel that I wouldn't use if the cameras are not running. I don't like stuff that doesn't work right. That thing works really good. Quick coffee break and I'll be right back with you. It's 4.30 in the afternoon, and I'm still drinking coffee. A lot of people quit drinking coffee in, after the morning's over, about nine or 10 o'clock. I find myself that uh, I myself drink it all day. We're about to run out of daylight. Try to work on this red oak here, if I can remember how to use this thing. Let me see. Uh, I think right there. I think that's right. We'll mark this one off. This is red oak, like I was saying. Run it through the splitter, then by then it will probably be dark, more than likely.
I just about tripped over that branch right there. The sun is going down, but I was able to finish that log and get all this red oat split up. I got a lot more left to do up here though. As far as firewood goes, we got two poplar and a cherry and another red oak over there to work on. And I got some logs coming in tomorrow from a tree service, white oak and red oak and maybe some sweet gum, maybe? I can't remember what he said. It was something besides those two. I could really use some white oak, man, I'll tell you. White oak is so expensive right now. Very difficult for a small sawmill like myself to buy white oak and pay those premium prices and make any money. Very difficult. It looks like Bruno's coming outside. You guys know what that means. He's ready for his daily tracker ride. It's getting a little chilly out here. I have to put my hoodie back on. Thank you. 